Hey everyone, today we are talking about batteries, battery types, charging, and getting the most out of your batteries, your laptops, phones, whatever. I'm joined by Patrick Stone. Hello. And uh, we, if you're wondering how this topic came about, we actually got into a fight over it, and, uh, and I won. So we're doing a video now. <laughs> Different types of batteries. So there's, there's lithium ion. Yep. What are some of the other ones? Nickel cadmium. And nickel metal hydride, or National Institute of Mental Health. <laughs> Right, yes, <laughs> NIMH would be the uh, the chemical, I guess, composition or something. Yeah. And then uh, also in some mice, like this new one we have here, uh, some mice and other smaller devices use lithium polymer or live poly. Right, tablets. We'll yeah, tablets use a lot of it. And uh, we'll talk about what all those different types of batteries are and how they work and stuff like that. So uh, why don't you start us out with a, some more of the uh, archaic forms of batteries? Yeah, so I'm old, and these batteries are old. Just kidding. Uh, no, the, the, but the nickel cadmium and the nickel metal hydride batteries have been around for a while. Um, nickel cadmium, I believe, was uh, the, the first one that came out. And um, the idea there is that uh, it's, it's good, um, but it can't produce the same kind of, I guess, battery charge that you want to have over a long period of time right. that, say, like a lithium ion can. Um, and so the kind of the thing that went through time was we started out with the nickel cadmium and then eventually somebody was like, hey, what about nickel metal hydride? Nickel metal hydride was a little bit better. And um, th th these are both okay, but the cells in these guys can't really give us a lot of voltage. Right. Whereas they, when they discovered the lithium ion stuff, yeah. it was a different ball game. Well, there's alkaline too. Yeah. which is more familiar to anyone using AA batteries that aren't rechargeable. So these alkaline ones, uh, they're sort of single shot. You get them once. This is actually a 1.5 volt battery. And technically, this nickel metal hydride one, this is a rechargeable battery we use for our camera equipment. And it's got 1.2 volts. And uh, so something interesting we learned about this yeah. is that the 1.5 volt battery will actually uh, sort of on the surface of things, it looks like it should last longer. Mm -hmm. And it, they sort of do in our experience because of the extra voltage, but they have a voltage, what was it, voltage? Depression. Depression. Is what it's often referred right. to. Like a, a lot of people think of uh, rechargeable batteries like nickel cadmium and nickel metal hydride as having a, a memory effect uh, thing that's going on there. But the term that is, I guess, better for it is a voltage depression. And what right. you're seeing is that over time, over the, the use of the battery, um, the, the nickel cadmium battery is gonna be like 1.5 volts, and then in a, in a very linear way, it's gonna go from 1.5 down to like 1.2, and then down to like one. And stop working, basically. Yeah, yeah, and, and then, um, I, I said nickel cadmium, I meant the alkaline stuff. Right, the alkaline yeah. batteries. And then these guys, uh, what they're gonna do is they're gonna kinda stay 1.2, and just 1.2, and then, oh, it's dead. Right. Yeah, so that's the that's the difference in those two, for sure. And the so memory isn't the right word for these, but the voltage depression works, and then that applies to the older laptops use the old nickel they cadmium. Did. Yeah, like if you remember the laptops with those really great screens that were like this big yeah. and had like 640 by 40 resolution, those were the nickel cadmium. Right. And eventually we made it to like 600 or 800 by 600 resolution nickel metal hydride batteries. Right. And then we, we, we eventually got to this really great 1024 by 768 resolution, and that was kind of the transition Moving area. Moving into lithium ion. Yeah. And so lithium ion is what everyone's pretty much familiar with. Uh, on the side of things that's still being used, you'll find nickel metal hydride in these types of batteries. Mm -hmm. You don't really find lithium ion in these from what we've seen. Yeah. And that's probably because of some of the logic that lithium ion requires. Yeah, when he says logic, he's just talking about like the, there's, these guys have circuitry inside of them to manage the cells. Right, so these have a certain amount of cells and when you research your laptop batteries, you'll see they all kind of have a different cell count. Mm -hmm. And that partially dictates the longevity of the battery per use. And when talking about battery longevity, uh, there's, there's a few key items here, one of them that probably a lot of people don't know is that your battery actually is sort of lying to you. When it says that there's 100% charge, it's not actually 100% of what this is capable of because it will sort of section off a piece of the battery as reserve. Yep. And that's because once it falls below a certain percentage, depending on the battery, once it falls be below a certain percentage charge, 
the lithium actually becomes volatile and can combust. And so they'll use this logic in part to control that and make sure it doesn't fall too low in normal use. I mean, unless you're cool with having batteries exploding on your shelves. Which actually happened with some Dell laptops on planes. Uh, if you look it up, they were, I think one of the articles called them terrorist laptops. And it's because the charge was, the battery was defective and they used the magnesium housing for the laptop and so it made fire. Uh, <laughs> so you don't want that. And that is why these will lie to you about the actual life of the battery. So interesting thought here is looking at battery life. So when lithium ion batteries first came out, your battery life was an hour and you were excited that it was an hour. You were just awesome, right. hour battery life. And now if your laptop doesn't have six hours of battery life, you're thinking, what the heck's going on? <laughs> um, so the question may be, hey, did the lithium ion batteries get better? Right. Or what changed? A couple of things. Go, hit me with something. Anything. So uh, I can start with the hardware. Mm -hmm. So lower TDP, CPUs, GPUs, uh, especially as you move towards the 10 nanometer process. Yep. You know, th this is why TDP is important because you'll see chips that are drawing like 14 watts or something for the really low end stuff. Yeah, versus? Versus like 70, 80, whatever, you know, depending on how many years you go back. Mm -hmm. uh, first gen Halem was like 140 watts, <laughs> and now Intel's down to the 40s, 50s, depending yeah. on. Yeah. So that's, that's certainly one thing. Mm -hmm. Another thing I was thinking about too is we mentioned a few minutes ago that the chips inside the batteries kind of control, you know, is the battery charged, is the battery not charged? How many charge cycles uh, working with? How many do I have to manage? Um, the the circuitry itself has gotten more intelligent, right. and so being able to manage the charge and discharge of the battery, ha how how rapidly the discharge is occurring, that kind of stuff, that's helping the batteries to last longer as well. Yeah, and then charge cycles is sort of a, a constant with lithium ion batteries. So these batteries kind of almost very vaguely like NAND. There's a certain amount of cycles they can go through before it's it's basically dead. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you've ever held onto a laptop long enough, you will eventually get notifications from Windows that the battery needs to be replaced soon. Yep. And that's because it's no longer getting the charge it used to. And so these batteries, kind of on average, they'll be 500 to 1,000 charge cycles, meaning how many times they can be charged. Mm -hmm. And as you burn through those, it will reduce uh, the, the effective length of the battery per charge. Mm -hmm. And that also impacts uh, a couple of other things, but the charge cycles specifically, they, it's not all sort of one level of abuse. The charge cycles are more abusive if you charge them a certain way. Yep. If you blast the battery with current, like you know those little... Speed chargers. Right, the yeah. little spare batteries for your phone. Mm -hmm. So those will charge you up pretty quickly sometimes. Yeah. But, they, I mean, how do they, they do it by... Uh, Blasting well, voltage, right, right, yeah. So, you know, when you're talking about power, there are two two real parts there. There's the voltage and the current, and the battery voltage. Like your computer needs, say, like 19 volts, and that's listed on the battery. If you look at the battery labels, the 14.4 for this one, 11.1 mm -hmm, right here, and then it has a, a, a milliamp hour piece here. And so, when you're talking about the power, you're talking about your current and your voltage, and so. Uh, charging the battery back up, you're, you're, you're more worried about your current than you are with your voltage. Uh, your voltage isn't really changing. And uh, so if, if you have like a, a quick charger, you're, you're shoving, I, this is kind of a bad way to say this, shoving current back into the battery faster than really the chemical processes are ready to commit to. And so that, that, can, that can be not good for the battery. Right. And, and again, we're using loose terminology here. Yeah, well also, uh, in terms of things the users can see, if you do that with your cell phone, uh, personally anyway, you'll normally see that the if you charge it to 100% with a, a non-standard charger for mm -hmm. the phone, you might see that the 100% actually is shorter yeah. usable life than using your wall charger. Uh, so that is, that's part of that. Yeah. And then uh, best practices for battery charging. So... Uh, one is use the correct charger. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> if, if at all possible, like don't switch from your factory charger. Um, it, you know, it, because your factory charger will usually have the exact same voltage and current specs that your battery does. And um, it's going to charge your battery the way it's supposed to. A lot of times the charger and the battery, the, the microchips inside of them will actually talk to each other. Um, that is if, the, if they're you know high enough quality. A lot of them 
are just you know real basic. But right. if it's high enough quality, they'll talk to each other and they'll understand how to work together. And that that again will make your battery last longer, and it's going to make your computer uh, last longer as a as a user, which right. is great. And charge cycles wise, you want to try and be as unabusive as possible. So. Uh, when you're using your laptop or other device, do try to occasionally run it down. And when you're charging, if uh, let's say you put your laptop away for a while, you don't use it, mm -hmm. it's kind of good practice to just unplug it uh, and, and let it sit. And then your, your battery will be slightly drained when you turn it back mm -hmm. on, depending on how long you leave it sitting because it, they, they don't hold the charge forever. But it will be better for it than just constantly delivering sort of a trickle to the, to yeah. the battery. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of the things too, um, it, it is a good idea every once in a while to just like drain your battery all the way and then charge it all the way back up. Right. That, that that's a good idea. Um, helps with the sort of memory thing, even though it's not really supposed to exist. Yeah. Yeah. It, it helps your battery to operate at its fullest potential. Let's just say right. that. Right. And then the last type of battery, these lithium polymer <coughs> ones. I'm holding up this mouse because I I think this has one. I know a lot of wireless mice do. And the reason they do is because it's sort of a conformable battery. Yeah. So it's actually like a, a pouch of, I guess, like a liquid almost. Mm -hmm. And that uh, that can be shaped around whatever is inside of your device. So if you have a weird area like this where you don't have a square surface right. to spread hard cells across, then you can use a, a Li poly or LiPo battery. Yep. Exactly right. So that's fairly new. But otherwise, they're basically lithium ion in terms mm -hmm. of practice. Right inside. Yeah. Yeah, we, we we were reading when we we're doing some research. We, we we try to do that every once in a while. Right. Research. Um, we were reading that um, the original lithium polymer batteries weren't the same as lithium ion batteries, right. but kind of the the nomenclature has become that lithium polymer batteries are just lithium ion technology at this point. Yeah, at this point, they're technically the battery in this is uh, lithium ion polymer or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think that's what it said. But basically, lipo battery. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. That's more than you ever wanted to know about batteries. Uh, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it helps someone out there. We have an old article I've written about best practices for laptop charging and charge cycles. So I'll link that below. It's pretty old, but it's all the worth same it. stuff. Yeah, that, it's worth it. Yeah, it's good, good stuff to know. So uh, thank you for watching. As always, Patreon link the post roll video. Check it out if you want to help us out directly. Thank you for leaving a comment if you have any questions, and we might address it in a future video. So uh, we'll see you all next time.